Welcome back to another tutorial with Miss Arsenal. Today we're going to be looking at text fields and how to code them dynamically. All right, so the first thing I need to do is to create a uh, button, something that I can interactively access to tell my text box what to display. Let's just create a text bo or a button here. Go for a nice red right shirt, why not? Okay, now I'm going to convert it to a symbol by selecting it. Right click. Right click, which is disabled because, of course, I'm doing a screen capture. So what I'll do is I'll select a new symbol. Create a symbol one button. Okay, and I'll do it from here. Okay, good enough. Come back over, take this guy, press delete, go into my library, and I'll take symbol one. Okay, so I have symbol one on my screen, and I have to give it a name. So I'll go properties, and I'll call this red. Okay, now that I have red ready to go, I need some code. So I'm going to access D2L, and I'm going to find where I have a basic code that has very simple instructions. Here we go, John and a trace statement. Nice and simple. Control C, go back into Adobe Animate, access my actions panel, actions or F9, and I'll press Control V, there we go. All right, so if I click on my button, my username or my instance name is red. So I can't have John in there because that's from a former program. And just to make things easy, I'm going to use my own functions. So this one's set to Demetrius. Let's take that off. And I'm going to call this clicked. Take off the comment. Take off the comment here. And take off Demetrius as well. You can probably keep the, the hello world trace statement. So if everything is according or uh, registering correctly, click to spelt just like this click is spelt. It should trace hello world. Okay, let's try it. Control enter. When I click on my button, my output says hello world. Fantastic. Now that we know that the button works, we need to have a text box so we can tell the button to put material into the text box. So I'm going to minimize my actions panel, stick it over here, take my text box. And typically when you draw a text box, it comes up as being static text. And I'll show you the difference. Make a text box. Right now my font is set to 29 and red. Okay, but it's static text. So if I don't write anything in it and I deselect, that text box disappears. It's non-existent because it was never really created. However, if I select a dynamic text box, and now I create a text box, now that I have something existing, I have the option of an instance name. So if I deselect, that text box stays there. That is a difference. So if I type in num clicked, that's going to be my instance name for my dynamic text box. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to have the computer register how many times I've clicked my button. Okay, so let's just align that a little bit better. Go into my actions panel. All right, so what I need to have is I need to have a global variable. That way, the variable is accessible by any other program. So I'll go var and let's type in, uh, let's say score, sure. What type is it going to be? It's going to be an integer, so I want it to be a whole number, and I want it to set it to zero. Okay. So now instead of tracing hello world, now that we know that the button actually works, I'm going to have it trace score, because it can access score. Close out of actions, control return. When I click on it, nothing happens. However, in my output, it comes up at zero, so I know it's working. Okay, one thing that's coming up in my, my output is font should be embedded for any text. Okay, so what I need to do is select my text box, 
come over to my properties panel for my text and select embed. What this will do is it'll attach the font family if I select all characters in range into my Swift. So anytime I export it or I run my program, it'll show up here. So if I try it again, control enter, with my button. So now there's no error here, zero, 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 but there's also no number. Well, what I have to do is I have to actually tell the computer to spit it out within the text box. To do so, I'm tracing score. That gives me this zero list down here in my output. But what I need to do is send it to my num clicked. So if I go num clicked dot txt, now this is super important. I have to have the dot txt here, otherwise it will not work because the text box has so many data, so much data in there that I could access my X property, Y, scale, font color, font size, position, etc. So there's a lot, lot to go there. So I'm just going to access its text property. So just the values or the characters that belong um, as a string. And I'm going to say, because it's a text, I want you to equal score. Now watch what happens when I do this. It's going to come up with an error, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute. So it says implicit coercion of a value of type integer to an unrelated type string. So I'm putting an integer score into a text box, which is typically a string. Okay. But if I go open quotation, close quotation, plus by doing this, I now have my string and I'm saying add the integer. Control return. There. So I know that it's registering because it keeps adding zeros. And it says zero and I click on it, but it's not changing. Well, I haven't set it to change. But it is displaying, so we're on the right track. Now what I need to do is have score go up by one. So I'm displaying the score. And then afterwards, I'm going to say score plus plus semicolon. That means I'm adding one value to my score automatically. And if it works, control enter, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's working. Now that I have it working there, I can take it off my trace, comment that guy out. Now what's happening is I'm sending my score out to the, top, to the, uh, to the text box. So as it comes through, I click it once, it displays zero because that's all the value it has in it. Now score becomes one. I click it again, and now it displays the one and then it adds the two. If I put score before I put num clicked, watch what happens. Right now I haven't clicked it. So as soon as I click it, it shows up as one. Okay, that's pretty good. Now if I had it as uh, display, First, it should display zero first. So nothing's actually happening. But if I put score in here first, and then I have my score go up, instead of saying nothing and then jump straight to one, now it should say zero. That's right. However, on click one, I want to say one. So this is actually my sixth click and it's still registering as five. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave it as is. However, globally, I'm going to copy this guy, Control C, Control V. So now he's gonna come up as saying zero, and then he's gonna come up as saying one. Okay. Now I think I'm going to have to switch around. Ah, there he goes. Before I even touched my button, he comes up as zero. And now he says zero again, of course, and now one. So it takes a double click. So the main order is kind of important. I need to have the score go up. Now that I have him displaying before he comes in, I need to put this after score. So score is going to equal zero. He displays zero. You click. Score goes up, score is now one, and now he's going to display one. So he displays zero, then displays one. Next time he displays two, 
So now it's in the right order. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Now that we know that it works, I can go ahead and move on with my code. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.